Welcome back to That Handicapping Show. I'm Claire Novak, joined once again by Tom Lamara. We are here in the studio in Lexington, but we will be talking about a race in New York, the Belmont Derby Invitational, grade one, for the turf runners going a mile and a quarter on the inner turf at Belmont. And Tom, this race has drawn up exceptionally well. We have some turf stars in the making and also some European horse trying to sneak in and steal the money. So we're both kind of going to stick with the local horses, but I'm still wavering over the fact that there are some Europeans <laughs> coming in who obviously wouldn't make the trip if they didn't think they had a very good shot. So let's talk about uh, the local horses first, and everybody's very excited about two in particular. Yes. Um, there's not a whole lot of speed in this race, which you would kind of expect in a grass race like this um, and it did draw a couple Europeans or draw two it, excuse me it drew two horses um, so maybe not as many as they had hoped for for 1.25 million dollars but the US based horses that are in here uh, they do appear to be probably the best of the three-year-old turf horses and it should make for an interesting race and when it comes down to looking at um, the pace of this race, I guess you really need to look at Bolo, who ships in from California. He has run very close to the pace on firm courses uh, in California. He's run his best Equibase speed figures on the grass. He did run a mile and a quarter in the Kentucky Derby, mm -hmm. but he can be forgiven for running 12th because a lot of horses did not run that well in that race. Plus, it was on the dirt and he seems to be a much better turf horse. So I think from a pace perspective, you have to really center on Bolo because he, sh he could be either on the lead or right off the lead. And uh, with his grass form and an expected firm course at Belmont on Saturday, uh, he should be a major factor. I didn't pick him on top, but in races like this where everybody likes to drop back, I like to look for at least one horse who's going to be prominent early. All right, and Bolo, that Temple City Colt, trained by Carla Gaines, he came back from the Derby 12th on May 29th at Santa Anita and ran quite well to win an allowance there under Rafael Bejarano, who does ship in to New York to mm -hmm. stick with the mount. Rafael rode him in the Derby and in that allowance win and comes back here to get on him. and. Uh, Another uh, interesting runner in here, and perhaps the, the likely favorite, what do you think about Divisadero? Well, I did pick him on top, but I've had a habit of picking him. Uh, <laughs> he's only raced four times. No, no, he's only raced four times. And um, granted, you know, speed figure wise, he is a little bit lighter than, than a couple horses in here, but his last race was very interesting. Um, the uh, the Penine Ridge, what was which was not graded, but mm -hmm. three at least three horses are coming out of that race into this race, which is a Grade One. It was a very good field. Um, Rafael Hernandez, the jockey, had to put him in the race early because the pace was so slow. Mm -hmm. It looked like he took him out of his game, but the horse still ended up closing with a flourish to defeat Takeover Target and Startup Nation, two Chad Brown horses who were entered in this race. Mm -hmm. I just thought that it was a very visually impressive race and that um, that the horse is, is extremely talented. So I am going to pick him on top. Um, I don't think he needs to drop that far back uh, as that last race would suggest. Mm, he uh, definitely had his breakout race in the American turf, which is a grade two at Churchill Downs. He won that and people really started saying, wow, who is this horse? And then when he came back and won at Belmont last time out, uh, people started to get excited about him. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure everybody's mm -hmm. hoping for his, his grade one win. And we've heard rumors that you know he might head down the road to Arlington, maybe run in the Secretariat if this race goes well. So definitely one to keep an eye on headed toward the Breeders' Cup if, uh, if he stays in form. Now, Takeover Target is one of two horses for Chad Brown. This is a very lightly raced son of Har Harlan's Holiday, who was making his stakes debut last time uh, when he ran against the Visadero and kind of tangled with him. But he didn't exactly have, I mean, he didn't have a terrible, terrible trip, but he was wide going into the turns and uh, just kind of got nipped near the wire there. I don't know what you think about him. I, I'm having a hard time deciding between Takeover Target and, and Bolo and what you've mentioned about the speed figures with Bolo and kind of looking at, at his track record, I'm almost thinking I would go with him over Takeover Target just because he hasn't had quite the... Uh, the, the speed ability, and also we're not sure of his ability to get the distance, the longest he's been is the mile right. and an eighth. Um, 
I don't think that should be too big of an issue. Mm -hmm. I think he ran a very, very good race in the Pennine Ridge. And uh, actually, he looked like the winner, uh, like, you know, like in the last 16th of a mile. Mm. And he got beat by Divisadero. I picked him second again behind Divisadero. Nicely um, done. I think, well, I, I just. Uh, I really liked the way those horses ran in that race, and I think they are very good horses. And, All right. Uh, so what Tom is saying is that he has he's got this group of horses figured out. No, I didn't say and that. And you should pay attention I didn't to say his that. picks. I didn't say that. Because I'm still over here thinking, should I take this French horse who's coming in, who's group two placed, or should I stay with the Americans? Anyhow, um, Canadal is a horse owned by the Aga Khan. He's group two placed. In France, they come in here trying to get the job done, and Christophe Sumillion will give him a ride. Uh, one of the two Euros in here, the other is Judd Montfarm's Postulation, who was recently gelded, makes his first start mm -hmm. as a gelding in here. You have a couple of others like Force the Pass, who's the Penn Mile winner, and Granny's Kitten, who was third in the Penn Mile last time out. Really nice field of horses. Very, very good field. Yes. So, should be an interesting race. And um, I don't really see a heavy favorite in this race, so maybe mm -hmm. if you like a horse, um, you know, like even take over target, uh, you know, he may be three, three or four to one, depending on where the money goes. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't disagree with you with picking the Sidero on top. I think that he is definitely an interesting horse to keep an eye on for Buff Bradley heading into the fall series and uh, you know wish all these runners the best safe trips home this weekend is busy because it is Independence Day and happy 4th of July to everyone we will have a lot of recaps mm -hmm. from uh, not That's only cool. from Saturday but also Sunday is a very very busy very day of day. racing so stay tuned to bloodhorse.com for all of those recaps and you can always follow us on twitter at bloodhorse i'm at bh underscore c novak he's at bh underscore t lamara and we always want to thank equibase for the pps and we want to thank you for watching that handicapping show